no na now so you, i gave you the syllabus right yes yeah you got the syllabus and then today we are going to uh, start our class with the first chapter like what was that your yeah, pre stress first pre stress okay so let me share my screen recording okay. has started so this is my okay. um, um is my screen visible to you hello no ma'am oh no Hello. Yes, ma'am. Okay, this time. We can share now. Okay, like last semesters we had gone through uh, steel structures. This time also in industry we are going to talk about uh, steel structures. And then last time in last semester, what you have gone through? What were the things you have uh, learned in sixth semester? You want? Member. Yeah. Then about compression members. Hmm. Yeah, connections. Basically, the beginning of steel structures, you have learned how to uh, do the connections. For connections, you need welding or bolting. Then compression members, you have gone through. Okay, so this time we are going to. Uh, I give you the syllabus like pre-stress concrete. We are going to go through that. Then again, 
um, buildings, then flat slabs. Basically, all these are this kind of thing. Mixtures. It will be little steel, little RCC kind of thing. So today, the first class we are going to take with the start with pre-stress. So what is pre-stress? You can see here it is already written that internal stresses are internal stresses are induced in the member to counteract the external stresses which are developed due to external loads or service loads. Now see, if I uh, like what happened in our uh, RCC structures when you had uh, gone through RCC structures in your uh, fifth sem etc. Uh, then what? Uh, what happened uh, there you were taking steels in the rcc beam suppose i'm taking a beam you, you used to take a uh, uh, rods that is the steels okay and the beam the structure which you used to take the beam suppose so what happened the beam is in tension at the bottom and at the top it is under compression you all know i think Yes or no, the top portion, top fiber is always under compression because if I show you one figure here, see this figure here, if you see, you can see the figure. Hello? Yeah. See in RCC normal RCC, yeah. In normal RCC, what used to happen? Uh, suppose this was a beam, and then uh, this were your rods. These were your uh, rods, now So what happened? Uh, when the external load, when these external loads used to uh, fall on the beam, what happened? These portion, this top portion, were all in compression. And these bottom portion are always in tension in this way. Right. So that's why what happened since you all know that the concrete is under, uh, sorry, concrete, uh, concrete is weak in com, uh, tension, weak in tension. That's why what used to happen, you used to see some cracks here at the bottom of the beam. Whenever you see some cracks in a beam, you will see the beam starts from the bottom. Why? Because concrete is very much weak in tension. Concrete can only take compressions, not tension. So that is why we use always steels. This rod steels at the bottom of a beam so that they can carry those tensions. They can resist those tensions, right? So now what happened? What is the difference between your uh, pre-stress and the normal RCC is that in the RCC, you used to take this uh, rods, the steels, but in the pre-stressing, what happens actually is that before this load, this external load, this typical load, before this load will fall on your beam, before that, prior to that, what will happen? We will create some stresses here on the beam develop some stresses on this beam beforehand okay so now what will happen since you already have uh, developed some stresses here in your beam before any external load is applied what happens when your these external when your these external loads will be applied these forces these ex uh, internal forces which we have developed will try to will counter try to counterbalance these loads these and these are the external loads so your this internal loads will try to counterbalance this external loads okay so that is what is called pre-stress pre-stress means before any external load is applied to your uh, structure or any member structural member what we do is we develop stresses we generate stresses before any prior to uh, this thing external loads prior to any kind of ex other external loads so that they can resist those external loads your internal loads or sorry your internal stresses which you are uh, have already developed in your beam say in your beam so now when any load is going to come on the beam say then those load will 
be counterbalanced by your this already generated stresses okay so this is called your pre stress that means the stresses are developed beforehand okay and here these are used when when we have a larger uh, span so suppose uh, the beams uh, or the abutments in bridges you will see the with a large span actually what i can say is that pre stress concrete is a form of concrete where uh, actually initial compression is given okay in the concrete before uh, applying any kind of external load so that the stresses from uh, any kind of external loads are counteracted in the desired way during uh, any uh, service loads during the service load of that member okay so this basically initial compression is intro, uh, introduced by high strength steel wires okay like uh, in rcc what we used to do we used to take steels these uh, rods these steels we used to take so uh, but in these when you have to create some stresses how we are going to create those stresses we need some kind of member for that uh, okay so what is that some materials we will need and so what is that in place of rods in place of steels we are going to use tendons okay uh, do you know what is tendon? Yes, ma'am. What is that tendons? Yeah, like steel wires. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Steel, steel wires, wires. Yeah, yeah, steel wires. But uh, like. The wires when we form uh, when we take some uh, two or two three three or four uh, wires together the high strength steel wires they become a strand and when we uh, take two three numbers of strands they will form tendons so like basically when you see the cable bridge bridges there now you will see the steel tendons or rods so how we are going to create those stresses in a beam we are going to use tendons and tendons when we pull they are very much uh, they have the higher tensile strength as compared to the normal uh, steels so okay i'll come to that now just if i see the basic of pre-stress is this so why you think why is this pre-stress concrete required why we need to do this complexity why not simply that directly we can take this steels uh, rods which we are generally the conventional method which we are using now in our rcc structures ma'am like you said for longer spans hmm. because in longer spans uh, there are more stresses compared to shorter spans so that's where we go we can use stress concrete like in bridges which are spun which are longer than uh, five meter or six meter so we can use this kind of hmm. basically what the main concept is that like uh, concrete we know it is good at compression but very weak in tension we all know that and so we see after external loading what will happen in the bottom part of the concrete a tension zone will occur so it will try to be elongated and then it will crack therefore because since your beam will this this here in this beam is trying to elongate here so con con concrete is <coughs> very much bad in compression so oh sorry good in compression but weak in tension so obviously they'll try it it will crack now when it cannot take that when it cannot give that elongation cannot resist that this is why we add some steel bars at the bottom section so that it can resist most of the tension and save concrete from cracking this was our traditional RCC st RCC structures, but for huge structures like mega structures with large beam and large spans, what will happen? Like in flyovers, you can see flyovers or any kind of uh, large bridges, bridges. Okay, so there we can since there will be in that in the what will happen for those larger beam spans? We should provide larger depth, which is often too uh, too much. Okay, for a bridge over in uh, uh, like rivers etc there will be no enough space under the bridge for ships to pass it okay so here comes the concept of pre-stress concrete okay like because see 
so that we can reduce the depth also then if we have higher strength of steel wires okay like tendons which will provide a greater tensile strength and they are obviously since they are very much higher in strength as compared to normal uh, steels therefore we can use in huge structures and huge uh, larger loads for larger loads okay so in normal rcc this happens okay but when we use pre stress concrete this will happen opposite okay because your tendons these are your tendons these are your tendons so that means as compared to this rcc this rc reinforced concrete and the pre stress concrete if you see your reinforced concrete there for the same load this will crack first your rc this is going to crack first as compared to your pre stress concrete okay so uh, now if we go this concept i think i already told you this things pre stress concrete is basically concrete in which internal stresses of a suitable magnitude and distribution are introduced so that the stresses resulting from the external loads are counteracted i already told you this thing okay these are the terminologies okay tendons if you see now this figure this is the tendons which will be used in your so these are your uh, tendons here this these are your tendons here placed here in pre stress concrete we use these tendons what we are going to do basically is that these tendons since it is higher in tensile strength so what we are going to do we are going to stretch or pull these tendons and when they will come in tension there will be tension on the tendons and then we are going to release these tendons and then these are going to come back again try to come back to its original places and then these are the stresses which will be developed on the beam so that these stresses will counter try to counterbalance your external loads okay so mm, another terminology is your anchorage a device generally used to because when you as i told you here in this figure when the tendons you have to pull this tendons then obviously you need anchorage also so uh, anchorage will be done there then after some time i'll tell you about pre pre tensioning and post tensioning later when we go to the next pages okay so anchorage is needed for anchoring your tendons and to create giving them tension so that they can give back the pre stressing stresses forces now comes your pre tensioning and post tensioning what is pre tensioning and what is your post tensioning see here pre tensioning is a method of pre stressing concrete in which the tendons are tension before the concrete is placed okay in this method what we do the concrete is introduced by bond between steel and concrete and what is your post tensioning a method of pre stressing concrete by tensioning the tendons against hardened concrete which means now i'll tell you um mm, Yes, then. So now, in pre-stressing, in pre-tensioning, what happens is that you have uh, actually in pre-pre-tensioning, what happens? Uh, yeah, I'll take that. But I'll take the. figure the last figure which we using this figure this one if you see this figure here i can try to explain here your pre tensioning and post tensioning suppose this is the a uh, tendon these are your tendons okay and uh, what will happen now in pre tensioning what happens 
we are going to give tension to this uh, tendons before your concrete is poured to the this beam okay before you make this beam what will happen we are going to give tension we are going to pull this tendons okay we are going to pull this tendons anchor it hmm anchor is we are going to pull it by uh, this thing now hydraulic jacks with the help of hydraulic jacks we'll be pulling these tendons and then we'll anchor them now in pretensioning what happens as the name suggests pretensioning that means before uh, the concrete is poured here what happens you are going to give tension to your tendons see now here we are giving tension tension to the tendons after that what we'll do after giving tension and then we we'll anchor them okay after that what we are going to do is that we are going to pour the concrete here now after tensioning what we have done we have poured the concrete here okay after that once your concrete attains the desired strength after 28 days we are then going to release this tendons which were under tension and then they are going to this one they are going to give this pre stressing forces so this pre stressing forces will be developed here in your inside your this beam with the hardened concrete and then they are ready that means now here in this beam already there are pre stressing forces developed and pre stressing forces developed and then when you apply some loads when any external load is applied when any kind of external loads are applied these stresses which were developed or generated due to the pull of the tendons and then releasing they will try to counterbalance so obviously since some extra stresses are already present to resist your external loads so obviously they will be of higher strength which will try to which will be able to resist more amount of loads so this was your pretensioning pretensioning means what before you pour the concrete before that only you give tensions to your tendons now if i come to now if i come to post tensioning in post tensioning what will happen no hello everybody is there now i cannot i can see only my screen i am not able to see the cisco webex yes ma'am okay yes okay. ma'am we are there okay okay so pre tensioning is done now when we come to post tensioning in post tensioning what will happen as that it is the reverse of pre tensioning in pre tensioning what we did we give tension to the tendons before uh, pouring the concrete and in post tensioning we will give a uh, tension after pouring the concrete okay so after pouring means what now first of all initially what we'll do the concrete will be cast here around the tendons okay around the sheeting sorry one sheeting will be here some sheeting will be there the sheeting will be there forming the ducts okay so now after that we'll pour the concrete here okay sheeting will be done okay initially the concrete is cast here around the uh, sheeting okay then what will happen here ducts will be formed mm -hmm. this ducts will be formed here and then but remember you have not given the tendons here okay only the duct is formed here now we will pour the concretes first of all and as the name say post tension that means now we have apply we have uh, given our concretes here 
okay after that we will uh, place the tendons here on the duct which is left we will place the tendons here and then what will happen after uh, this is formed a duct is formed and then we then what will happen this is the tendon sorry the concretes are placed here duct the tendons are also placed here then once the your concrete attains the desired strength after 28 days we are going to uh, pull after pulling the concrete and attaining desired strength we are going to pull a similar way uh, pull the tendons it will uh, be under tension then again after uh, this concrete attains the desired strength what we will do we will release it again this pre-stressing forces will be pre-stressing forces will be developed here so pre-stresses are developed so in pre-tensioning this can be these are the two methods remember that these two are the methods of tensioning okay these two are the methods of tensioning that means pre-tensioning and post-tensioning of mm, developing the stresses or uh, giving tension to the tendons pre-tensioning and post-tensioning so in post-tensioning what happens concrete is poured before after that only tensioning is done for the your tendons mm. We go now to where we were. Pre tensioning and post tensioning is done. Now, materials for pre stressed concrete members. My class was still how much? Because I think after 50 minutes, this is going to end. So materials for pre-stress concrete is what? These are your materials. You know that cement is there. Ordinary Portland cement you can use. Portland slag cement. But we must know that. Where is my cursor? So we must know that what? Cement you are going to use. You can use this these cements. Portland slag cement. Rapid hardening. Portland cement. High strength. Ordinary cement. Grade of concrete which we'll be using will be of higher grade because obviously for a higher loads, greater loads we are using, so uh, greater grade it must be used. Hmm. Pre stress concrete requires concrete which has a yeah, see here what I it is already mentioned here. Pre stress concrete requires concrete which has higher compressive strength, reasonably earlier age with comparatively higher tensile strength than ordinary concrete. Understood now this thing? The concrete for the members shall be air and train concrete composed of Portland cement, fine and coarse aggregate, admixtures and water. The air and training features may be obtained by the use of either air and training Portland cement. Okay, in some cases you can use this also. Then, not be less than 4% or more. The water content shall be as low as possible for air and train kind of cements. Okay. You may not use that. Then these are the steels, but uh, basically the tendons kind of what you are going to use high tensile steel tendons, strands, or cables. Twister shall be only shall be any one of the following plain hard drawn steel wire. Okay. Conforming to IS1785, coal drawn intended wire. You may use high tensile steel wires, you may use or uncoated stress relief strand. High strength steel contains what 0.7 to 0.8% of carbon, 0.6% of manganese, 0.1% silica. Hmm. Durability, fire resistance, if we talk about that, and the cover requirements for PSC members. 20 mm cover for pretension members you should use. Okay, and 30 mm of the cable size, whichever is bigger for post tension for pre tension how much 20 mm cover for post tension 30 mm or the size of the cable whichever is greater but in aggressive environments when we use like very hot temperatures in those kind of areas or very uh, in those uh, areas or those places where some uh, 
heavy high temperature works are being done so that is obviously aggressive temperature is there on that particular area so in that case what happened these covers are increased by another 10 mm that means for pretension 30 mm cover you may take you have to take and for post tensioning 40 mm or the size of the cable whichever is greater then if we come to the next one the necessity of high grade of concrete and steel why we need the high grade of concrete and steel because higher the grade of concrete higher the bond strength okay so which is very much vital in pretension concrete also higher bearing strength which is vital in post tension concrete generally what we take minimum m30 grade of concrete is used for post tension and m40 grade concrete is used for pretension okay so uh, as i told you that pretension or pre stressed concretes are used for huge structures for heavy loads greater loads so therefore obviously your grade of concrete must be greater so we use m30 or m40 grade of concrete for depending upon the pretension and that means method of pre-stressing okay. now if i come to your uh, pre-stressing steels see these are as i told you uh, what are tendons what are wires so actually what are tendons if you don't know till now then wires are what the pre-stressing wire is a okay our meeting is going to end in five minutes mm. pre-stressing wire is a single unit made of steel and strand is what two to three or seven wires are want to form a pre-stressing strand and uh, two or two three or more strands will form your tendon and a group of tendons will form your cable bridge cable cable bridges if you see there then okay a uh, bars a tendon can be made up of a single steel bar the diameter of the bar is much larger than that of a wire okay i think for today we should stop here because the meeting is going to end here i i think i should take attendance hello i have stopped sharing my screen ma'am yeah. okay ma'am yeah understood or not today something yes ma'am okay yes, this is section b na yes ma'am ma'am i have a question ma'am hmm hello ma'am hello i think i yeah, ma'am ma i'm coming to question so no Manasson, oh sorry, Michael. Yes, ma'am. Like, yeah, yeah, I think you uh, given the group WhatsApp group we have for DOS three because I think I should take attendance. Otherwise, okay, how will give you attendance? I think it will end now. Uh, I'll call out okay, the phone numbers. Okay, you give me a okay, call in the WhatsApp DOS three group. Okay, ma'am. Okay, twenty ninety four. Oh no, sorry, forty four. Okay, ma'am. Forty four, sixty four. 65 yes, 64 hello ma'am 64 64 ma'am 65 yes ma'am 66 67 69 69 yes, 70 71 yes, 70 yes ma'am 71 72 73 74 Present, 74 you please tell me your uh, roll number so okay, enrollment so if i call 74 you please tell 74 74 75 75 ma'am 76 77 77 78 77 okay 78 79 80 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, please tell your enrollment, 288, 288, sir, there one is lateral, one is normal, um, Sadiq, ma'am. Abu Talib. Oh, ma'am. Lateral. Lateral is present, oh, and and this one, uh, Sadiq. Oh, ma'am. Sadiq. 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 Sadiq.
Absent. Ma'am, he is out. Kadipul Islam. Yes, ma'am. Ninety what? Tell me, I don't know. Ninety-seven, ma'am. Ninety-seven. Okay, okay. Ninety-eight. Ma'am, ninety-eight. Hundred. Hundred two. Hundred three. Hundred seven. Hundred ten. Hundred twelve. Hundred fifteen. Hundred sixteen. Yes, one one five more. Okay, okay. Ma'am, one hundred sixteen present. Okay, hundred one one six. Okay, hundred seventeen. Yes, ma'am, hundred seventeen. Okay, hundred nineteen. Okay, hundred nineteen. Hundred twenty one. One twenty one. Hundred twenty one. One twenty one. Yes, ma'am, one twenty one. Okay, one two two. Okay, one two two. One two three. One two three. Yes, ma'am, present. One two five. One two five.